Hi, my name is David with Max Accordion, and today we're going to be talking about what to look for when buying a used accordion. And um, this is a really challenging subject because, you know, um, a lot of times you just don't know what you're looking for in, when purchasing. Uh, the most important thing here is all these accordions, they look wonderful. And it's a celluloid that we call mother of pearl uh, material, which makes accordions that are 60, 70, even 80 years old look wonderful. But what's going on on the inside is what we're concerned about. And whether it's going to be a bellow full of problems. Bellow full of problems. A little joke there. But um, just remember, everything that is wrong on the accordion on the inside is going to be an expense in your pocket. And finding an accordion repairman in your area could be challenging. Um, a lot of times you will have to send the accordion out. So it's good to go through all these um, steps that I'm about to tell you before purchasing. Um, we're going to start off with the number one um, is going to be the most important thing when the question you're going to ask whether buying on eBay, which I don't recommend because it just always seems like there's something wrong with an accordion on eBay. Um, but the question you want to ask the people or um, the owner, is there any musty odor or mold smell to the accordion? This is huge, either to the accordion or to the case, because what happens is if there's a musty odor to the accordion, that means that there's mold growing on on the inside. If there's mold growing on the inside, the mold gets into the balsa wood, gets onto the reeds, the metal reeds. Um, it starts causing um, the, the uh, reeds to go out of tune. It starts causing the balsa wood to swell. Sometimes you're gonna get keys, they'll start to stick. The, uh, you just have that offensive smell every time that you're playing. I um, did one time made the mistake of tearing apart a whole accordion that had a, um, I purchased had a musty smell to it and I spent hours and hours taking off every single piece and cleaning it, uh, bleaching it, trying to get rid of that mold. It, it, was, it was painstaking and it's very, very expensive. So my recommendation to you, if you have an accordion that smells musty and moldy, it will not be go away that smell by just putting a little um, bleach and cleaning it, wiping it down, that'll always be there unless you've got the whole thing. So walk away, okay? <laughs> That's number one walk away from anything that's musty or smelly. And I, I use the same thing with cigarette smell too. If it uh, has a strong cigarette smell that gets into the, the accordion, that smell is very hard to get rid of. Two, two important questions to ask. The second thing that we want to talk about is going to be the size of the accordion. So you say, Dave, how do I find the size of the accordion? Well, let me tell you. The edge of the white key to the edge of the white key is what you want to measure. Not from the outside, not from the outside but from edge of white key to edge of white key. Now this is gonna tell you the size. So if you come up with a 19 inches or more, you're looking at the big master accordions, the, the, um, the big full scales, big full keys. They're heavy, they're you know anywhere from 21, 27 pounds and up. Um, so gonna be heavy on the shoulders. It's gonna be a big, long um, keyboard for you to be able to play. The 18 inch keyboard, if you're measuring anywhere from 18 inches, Moving more towards a student accordion. Uh, still got some weight on them, still, still pretty heavy. Uh, you can get anywhere from 18, I'd say 20, 21, 22 pounds. Um, still big keyboards, but just, you know, you're losing an inch. So that means the keys are going to get a little bit smaller. Um, the 17 inch keyboard, which I like, I like the 17 inch. I think this one here is a 17 and a quarter. Um, it's just going to have, you know, you find the accordion with that size, you get a, still a nice, good, full size keyboard. It's definitely a lot lighter on your, on your shoulders when you're playing and can still produce a big sound. One of my favorites is the 16 inch keyboard, measuring from edge of white key. Very common among students now who are uh, people who are picking up the accordion. You know, just don't want that big, heavy, bulky accordion on their shoulders anymore. They want something, 16 inch is a great stroller accordion. You're able to get out there and walk around and play. Not so, um, not so heavy. Um, still, once again, the, the keys get a little bit smaller, but the, here's the thing um, with the accordions, that your, your fingers really do adapt after you practice and practice with them with the size accordion that you have. Unless you just got you know, a really small accordion and you got big construction fingers and uh, you know, trying to hit them, then maybe you might want to go with something bigger. The last one is the 15 and a half inch keyboard from edge of white key to edge of white key. Uh, definitely going to be a child's accordion or a small woman who will play these accordions because the keys are definitely going to get smaller and um, you need to, um, small fingers to be able to play them. 
Still, you know what I mean? 15 and a half inches though, you can still pow, um, if you get the right accordion, you can still punch a good sound out and bright sound. I know a lot of um, Latino bands that, you know, they play with a 15 and a half inch keyboard um, because they're, um, they get used to those, that size of the key. Just all what you're looking for. Um, another thing I, I want to talk about is the keys. So now when you go to a place and you go to try this out, or you ask them, um, you want to try every single key. So, um, you want to pull out the one, and then push back in. Then you want to do the same thing for the next one. Every single note. Next one. And what you're looking for, this is what you're, first of all, you want to make sure that you're hearing a decent sound that's coming out. It should be a nice sound. If you start hearing fluttering or, or buzzing sound or raspiness, okay, uh, usually you, you got something going on with the, the leathers that are on top of the reeds. And so there's some, some have aged over the years and they're, they're, they're starting to flutter and um, instead of putting a nice sound out and um, keeping down uh, flat. So that's important. You do that with every single key on the keyboard, in and out, and making sure that every note sounds good. If you find a key that doesn't sound, just remember that's something that will need to be repaired. And there's nothing cheap about getting an accordion repair. Um, so it's, it's in, like once again, I said the, dip, the challenging part will be finding someone who can repair it. Uh, so then you want to check all the registers here. Um, and some will have clarinet and violin, bassoon. And so you want to press each key. This is bassoon. And there we go again. We want to go push in and squeeze out. And you're going to want to do that for every single key. And I know it's painstaking, but you want to make sure that there's no missing notes, no fluttering, no raspiness, okay? And no uh, keys that don't sound. Now sometimes if you might have, if you're up in an upper register, you might have a note that doesn't sound and you know, sometimes you can live with it. If you're getting a good um, price on it, it's definitely a good a bartering um, tool that you can say, hey, look, this note isn't sounding or it's raspy a little bit. You know, can you, uh, can you come down in price? Something to think about if you're willing to live with it and you're just learning how to play the accordion. Um, okay, so after you've done all that, let's go to the left side and you have 120 bass buttons, some might be less, um, might have 12 or 48 or 32 bass, but you're gonna do the same thing for each one. You're gonna start start on one end, and you're gonna go, you're gonna press that and pull out. And you're gonna squeeze back in. Make sure it sounds, no raspiness, no fluttering, and make sure it sounds. And make sure it doesn't stick. That's another thing I wanted to tell you. Make sure that there's no sticky keys. You know, you, I always see on eBay, the guy will say, oh, it has a sticky key, but I'm sure it's an easy fix. It's not an easy fix. <laughs> Sometimes it, um, it might be an easy fix. You put a little WD-40 behind the key. But a lot of times you have to check to take the whole rod out here, pull it all the way out, and put, these keys will pop out each one by one. You gotta find out what's going on, if the spring's broke, if the balsa wood is swollen where it's going into, if that needs to be sanded down. So it's not an easy fix. Same with the left hand. If there's a sticky button, um, you can guarantee it's, it's gonna be a headache to have repaired. So, I mean, and especially if you're trying to do it yourself. Um, to have a, a, a sticky base button or buttons that don't go up or down, you literally have to take off the base strap here, um, unwheel it here, take off the back panel, and you'll see all the rods in the shafts there. You're gonna need to um, remove every 120 of them until you find the problem, and then you gotta make sure you keep them all in order. If you get one mixed up, then you're in trouble. So the key is, uh, let's stop that before we even go there. Check each button, make sure they all work. And you can just go down each one, the major chords, the minor chords, just keep them all right down the whole thing, the seven, and the diminished. And you just wanna to go to the next row. Same thing, in and out for each note. And the major chords, and the minor chords, and the seven chords, and the diminished chords. After you've checked every single one of these, um, and, and make sure that they are, there's no sticky keys, because nothing worse is when you're playing, and then to have a sound like this all the time while you're playing, 
is, is, is very aggravating. <laughs> so um, check that out. You also have a couple registers on here. Some will have two. Some won't have any at all. But when you do, you know, click it. Make sure it changes the sound. That's the that's tenor. And you want to do the exact same thing for everyone, too. When you change the register. Make sure it clicks back. And make sure that's all in order. Um, you know, and, um, one of the last things here, well, next to the last things um, we're going to be doing is the compression of the accordion. These are the bellows. So it is so important that there's no holes and um, there's no air leaking from these bellows. So what you want to do is you want to, there's a little air button right here. Okay, you never want to just pull the bellows out on the accordion because you're just looking for trouble there. You, um, you don't want to bust these um, bellows. So you want to pull this out like this, okay? You want to hold it there and then you want to try to push it in. Push it in gently. See, see how this is holding? It's not, that means these are sealed perfect. So that's also very important when you're doing this. So something to make sure with the compression. Well, sometimes you get an accordion, it'll, have, it'll come in slowly, okay? And that's not bad. So you just have to kind of play a little bit, make sure that, you know, it does lose a little compression over the years. But ideally, if you get an accordion that goes out and you go to push in, the compression holds, that's, that's awesome. That's what you, you really want to look for. Um, one more thing, the base strap here, you want to make sure that there's a little wheel right here. This is going to open and close the, the bellow straps to make sure um, your hand fits in there. So you want to make sure you open that up and it's the, this, this strap should feel comfortable. You should be able to shift up and down uh, with your left hand to make sure it doesn't get stuck. If it's tight and you're just getting your fingers in there, you try to open that up and it doesn't open or it opens up and then it just comes out. Stay away from. It. Okay, that's that. That'll probably be your best bet in, in when you're doing something like that. So some of the things uh, to look forward. I guess last but not least is the straps. Make sure the straps are in good um, condition. Make sure that they let out and they'll fit. And uh, but the one thing about the straps is you can always get new straps anywhere from twenty dollars to forty dollars or um, on eBay or Amazon.com. So you can always buy the new straps. The left strap is a different ball game. So don't let someone talk you into saying, oh, you can always just buy a left strap, even though it's all busted up and it's not connected. Because in order to get this strap on, it's riveted on the inside. You're gonna have to take this off the panel um, and unrivet the, uh, pop that out, get a new accordion strap that's gonna fit correctly in this slot right here and rivet it back in. So the base strap is not an easy, easy fix. So it's something to think about. Well, I hope this all helped you out. I know it's such a challenging and um, can be frustrating um, times. That's why I made the video for you. Um, my name is David with Max Accordions. You can always come and visit me. I do sell used accordions. My accordions are ready to go and are in great shape and priced right. So it's www.max, that's M-A-C-S, accordion, A-C-C-O-R-D-I-O-N, Dot com. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you. I hope this helped you out, and we'll see you next time.